Hello, everybody. We're going to get started just after 1.30 here. So good afternoon and thank you for joining us today. My name is Rebecca Dunn and I'm the Research Station Outreach Coordinator in the Office of Research with the Agri-Food Partnership. So today's webinar, uh, we're featuring the Ontario Aquaculture Research Centre, and this is the final installment of a four-part webinar series. So we featured one uh, research centre for each webinar. Um, if you weren't able to tune into those, we can provide links to you. Um, so this series was developed to demonstrate how Ontario's agricultural research centres support our provincial and federal agriculture sectors by providing a platform for collaboration, innovation, and provide a space for researchers to conduct the latest research that advances the agri-food sector. This webinar series is hosted by the Ontario Agri-Food Innovation Alliance, which is a collaboration between the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs, and the University of Guelph. During today's webinar, we're going to hear from Dr. David Hubin from the Department of Animal Biosciences at the University of Guelph, and RJ Taylor, who is the co-owner of Cedar Crest Trout Farms and the managing director of the Ontario Aquaculture Association. They will be talking to us about how access to the Aquaculture Research Centre enables research and benefits the aquaculture sector. Before we begin, um, just a couple things uh, related to housekeeping. So if you would like to submit questions throughout the webinar, please do. Um, questions, I will be asking these questions to the presenters at the end. So if you use the Q&A function, it should be at the bottom of your screen. Um, if you think of anything throughout the presentation, please um, put it down there and I'll make note of it and ask it to the presenters at the end. Um, captions are also available at the bottom of your screen. Uh, and lastly, today's presentation will be recorded so that we can make it available to those who weren't able to attend today. So now we're going to have the opportunity to hear from the Vice President of Research at the University of Guelph, Malcolm Campbell, and Lauren Hepworth, the chair of the Agricultural Research Institute of Ontario, as they give their opening remarks. Hello, everyone. My name is Malcolm Campbell, and I have the pleasure and privilege of serving as the Vice President of Research at the University of Guelph. I'm here today to talk to you about agricultural research centers, centers that we operate on behalf of the Agricultural Research Institute of Ontario and the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. These agricultural research centers are operated by University of Guelph as part of the Ontario Agri-Food Innovation Alliance, a remarkable partnership between OMAFRA and the University of Guelph. These agricultural research centers are located right across the province in traditional Indigenous territory. This territory has been occupied by Indigenous people for millennia, where they themselves have been involved in agricultural practices and where they remind us that we are bound to this traditional territory through the Dish with One Spoon uh, Covenant. A covenant that reminds us that we all consume collectively out of one bowl with but one spoon. It's a good reminder of what it is that we do at these agricultural research centers because there we generate knowledge that we all share collectively. And the knowledge that we create at these research stations is phenomenal. It's phenomenal because it addresses the real world priorities of the Ontario agriculture and food sector. So the research that we conduct generates discoveries that in turn fuel innovation, that in turn increase productivity enhance sustainability, lead to greater job creation, and trade. As such, these research cent centers are phenomenal engines for driving forward the productivity of Ontario's remarkable multi-billion dollar agriculture and food sector. The research that is done at these centers is done in partnership. It's not done alone. It's done with University of Guelph researchers working together with colleagues in OMAFRA, as well as working together with many private and public sector partners, sectors from, uh, partners from other universities, as well as partners from industry. And importantly, people for whom the discoveries really make a difference. Our agriculture and food sector partners here in the province, from farmers all the way to consumers. We're immensely proud of the research that emerges from the agriculture research centers here in the province of Ontario, and it gives us the greatest of pleasure to share with you through this series, the incredible game-changing differences that we're making. It now gives me the greatest of pleasure to turn things over 
to the chair of the Board of Directors of the Agricultural Research Institute of Ontario, Lauren Hepworth. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for this webinar. My name is Lauren Hepworth and I'm the chair of the Agricultural Research Institute of Ontario or ARIO as it's more commonly known. ARIO is an agency of the Government of Ontario with responsibility for providing strategic advice to our Minister on agri-food research priorities, modernizing the province's agri-food research facilities, and oversight of competitive research programs, and finally, management uh, of the 15 research properties that are owned by ARIO. This network of research stations includes facilities that focus on virtually every major agriculture sector. ARIO invests in these properties because they are critical to research advancement and bringing innovation to Ontarians. Uh, they are world-class facilities that are available to researchers and students, including such places as the newly built Elora uh, Beef Barn. They are a platform for research that drives innovation, sustainability and productivity, keeping our agri-food sector competitive both locally and globally. ARI works closely with the University of Guelph, which provides property management and research expertise to ensure these facilities run efficiently. This strong relationship among ARIO, OMAFRA, and the University of Guelph ensures the research stations are built, optimized, and maintained to accommodate future-facing, demand-driven research and innovation that benefits all of Ontario. I hope you enjoy hearing about the collaborations and the impact these stations facilitate for the benefit of the agri-food sector in Ontario. Hi everyone, I'm back. So before we hear from our first live speaker, I'm going to provide a brief overview on the background of the Aquaculture Research Centre. The Ontario Aquaculture Research Centre was first established in 1993 by OMAFRA and the University of Guelph to assist the commercial fish farming industry in Ontario. Um, most of you probably know it as it was previously known as the Alma Aquaculture Research Station or AARS. The centre has 2,600 square metres of floor space with more than 350 fish rearing units, which allow for production and research of a full range of fish from egg to broodstock. There are several buildings on the property, including but not limited to five wet labs. And one of the wet labs is a quarantine facility with a recirculating aquaculture system. The centre offers quarantine facilities for the controlled importation of exotic species or strains of fish. To date, the quarantine unit has been used to successfully import and study Atlantic salmon, Nile tilapia, Lake whitefish, and Lake sturgeon. Um, the research centre has also developed Arctic char and new strains of spring spawning rainbow trout for Ontario farmers. The main focus of research at the facility has always been rainbow trout because this species represents approximately 92% of the total volume of seafood products produced by the aquaculture industry in Ontario. Um, you'll see here on this slide the primary areas of research and you'll hear our speakers talk about some of these today. Um, the aquaculture center houses several types of fish including trout, one breeding population reproduces in the spring and one in the fall. Arctic char, this population has been maintained since it was introduced to Ontario in the mid-1990s by the University of Guelph. Lake whitefish is a more recent addition and is currently being investigated as an alternative aquaculture species in Ontario. The research center is trying to create a captive breeding population for this species using wild caught fish from Georgian Bay, which are reared at the facility. Lake sturgeon were brought in from wild collections in Northern Ontario for research projects. Coho salmon, the research center recently imported the first batch of coho salmon eggs, which is also being investigated as an alternative species for culture in Ontario. Not much is known about the coho salmon rearing, so the center staff are looking to learn as much as possible to help the adoption of the species by growers in Ontario. You can access the list of current research projects ongoing at the facility on the Alliance website. Um, the link will be provided here on this slide. So 
So our first speaker is going to be Dr. David Huben. Dr. Huben completed his master's at the University of Guelph, followed by a PhD at the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences with a focus on yeast as a protein source and impacts on the blood physiology and gut microbiome of farmed rainbow trout and Arctic char. Since then, he pursued postdoctoral research at the University of Stirling within the Institute of Aquaculture, where he investigated environmental stressors and omega-3 fatty acid requirements of farmed Atlantic salmon. He has also collaborated on aquaculture projects in Norway, Finland, France, Italy, and across Canada with a range of research on fish farming technologies, aquafeeds, and pathogen control. Since June 2020, Dr. Huben has returned to the University of Guelph in the Department of Animal Biosciences as an assistant professor of aquaculture to continue the work of newly retired Professor Rich Mokia. Uh, he teaches a third year undergraduate course on aquaculture and mentors a growing number of grad students with aquaculture projects. He routinely collaborates with feed and fish farming companies, as well as government agencies, both provincially, nationally and internationally. So we're going to let David take it away when he's ready. Thank you, Re Rebecca. Can you see my slide okay? Yep. Great. Um, if you hear any noise, I apologize. It's either my big dog or my two year old screaming upstairs. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, thanks for having me on and, and giving me this platform uh, to talk about my research. And thank you for the, um, the partnership and also uh, kind of putting some light on the Ontario Agriculture Research Center, which I'll call Alma today. So first I want to do a bit of a hat tip to uh, Rich Machia and, and Michael Burke, the former uh, manager of the Alma Research Station. They've done over 20 years of, 28 years of collaborations along with uh, technicians and staff, including Michael Burke, Neil Macbeth, and David Bevan. And so now we have Marcia Chason, who's the new manager of the research station, and she's an absolute delight to work with, and I'm excited to uh, keep working with her and, and see what the future holds. So Alma has done a lot of collaborations with government, including OMAFRA, of course, who funds the facility, but also ministries of natural resources, uh, environment, uh, fisheries and oceans, Environment Canada, and the NRC. Also at the University of Guelph, there's a lot of different departments involved, especially animal biosciences, but also, also pathobiology with John Lumsden, integrative biology, especially with Roy and, uh, and Moria, biomedical with Weatherland and, and food science, environmental science and engineering departments. So it's, it's quite a diverse uh, group of researchers we have at Alma. Also, Universities of Waterloo, uh, Laurier, McMaster, and Fleming College all do work at Alma, and also universities across Canada, including University of New Brunswick, British Columbia, Laval, and Quebec, and the Freshwater Institute in the USA. There's a lot of industry uh, research from different farmers from Aqua Cage, New North, and Northern Tilapia, producing a variety of species, especially rainbow trout. Um, RJ will talk about uh, his company Cedarcrest and the hatchery production they, they have got going on there. Also, there's linen farms and sustainable seafood. And then on the nutrition side, there's a lot of different companies involved in feeding experiments. A couple of big companies, Gretting and Evos, which are across Canada and internationally. And then a local fish feed producer, Sharp, which is uh, formerly Blue Water and also works under Spectrum and some other feed ingredient suppliers as well. So what are benefits of ALMA for my work? Uh, there's a lot of educational activities. Uh, in normal years, there's usually a class trip with my aquaculture course, uh, but during the COVID situation, ALMA's been great at putting together videos and also talking with uh, Marcia and, and different staff uh, virtually. There's usually workshops such as getting start started in aquaculture and aquaponics. There's different training uh, activities such as the uh, fish user training for ethics permits to do research. Also, Alma hosts research assistants and technicians and summer students. I was one many, many years ago. 
In terms of industry collaborations, there's huge funding opportunities, especially with the uh, Agri-Food Innovation Alliance. And there's a lot of undergrad and graduate projects, including uh, a few of my students who get a little fish blood on them from time to time, but are quite happy doing some really fun and, and cutting edge science. So my research focus is in four different areas, fish husbandry, sustainable ingredients, nutritional requirements in the microbiome. And I look at interplay between all, all these areas. A hot topic right now is using insects and, and algae and, and brewer's yeast as a sustainable ingredient for fish feeds to replace uh, fish meal and fish oil. But we don't really know the impact on the fish and also the gut microbes. And there's increasing literature in this area as well because we're finding out the gut microbiome not only produces fatty acids and vitamins, but it also interacts with the fish's immune system and also their brain chemistry and behavior. And so we have to look at using these sustainable ingredients, but in a healthy way and ensuring their nutrient requirements are met at the same time. I'll just talk about four different, uh, four different uh, studies I either did in the past at the Alma Research Station or uh, in the future that I plan to do. The first was a, uh, a study comparing membrane filtration to UV, which is two different technologies that remove uh, bacteria from recirculation aquaculture systems or RAS. And so Alma is really great because they have three different units where you can kind of plug and play different technologies and test them out. And I was able to do that side by side in a pilot scale RAS they had of Nile tilapia uh, years ago. And so we identified different bacteria that can actually be UV tolerant. And so this is a problem. And, and so membrane filtration can remove those from the system. And so one of those UV tolerant bacteria is Flavobacterium cyclophilum, and that causes cold water bacteria disease, which is a problem for research systems as well as net pen operations. And I plan to do more research using these research systems, especially because they are being renovated this year for more temperature control and, and to update the different filtration systems. In terms of sustainable ingredients, we recently did a, a trial at Alma feeding different plants to improve fish gut health. Alma has over 100 one meter flow through tanks, around 350 liters. So it's a great platform to do a lot of different research. Uh, and the idea is to replace or reduce the reliance on fish meal and fish oil, but at the same time, make sure that gut health's intact and, and make sure they're they're meeting the needs of, of their growth and, and reproduction. In terms of insects, yeast, and microalgae, I've got future plans to test those out as sustainable ingredients in aquafeeds. In relation to nutritional requirements, uh, there's a, one new farm of Lake Whitefish in Manitoulin Island with Jeff, um, Jeff Turk and Ross Herbert. And so it's a new species farmed in Ontario. Uh, there's high demand by both uh, the fish markets across Canada, but also in uh, the First Nations communities that rely on this fish. And so the native stocks, the wild stocks have collapsed. And so fish farming is uh, one way to uh, meet the demand from people wanting to eat this uh, delicious fish. But on the other side, it's a new species, so we don't really have a good idea of, of what to feed them. And so we have a study plan for the summer with a master student that will look at optimizing feed and producing feeds at the Animal Biosciences Department. And we're also looking to develop a, a feed extruder for more feed nutrition trials. Uh, at Alma, they have bigger tanks, two meter tanks as well, 1500 liters that are perfect for this. And so it's a native species and we're looking at increasing its production. So that'll definitely help out the industry. And some future plans, I, my lab group wants to look at omega-3 requirements as, as well as other nutrient, uh, essential nutrients. Kind of uh, the, one of the last ones, gut microbiome. So 
were just funded by the uh, Agri-Food Innovation Alliance. So thank you for that, which is very exciting. And, and we're going to next year look at pre and probiotics and insects and their effects on the fish gut microbiome and immune response. And so we're going to look at different life stages of fish from fry, fingerling up to juvenile fish. So we need a, a different array, a whole array of different tank sizes. So Alma's perfect for that. And we really want to improve the fish health and growth using these different feed additives. And I also have other things in the pipeline, looking at antimicrobial resistance, as well as comparing that microbiomes between wild and farm fish. And I've got a PhD student coming uh, late next year to, to look at that. So how is this research benefiting the agriculture industry? Well, we want to improve the performance of both net pens and recirculation systems, replace fish meal and fish oil uh, to be more sustainable. We want to optimize fish growth and feeding through their uh, nutrition and also increase their the fish health and resilience through the microbiome. So take home messages if you're completely uh, blanked during that and sorry that you heard my dog for a bit barking. Uh, but the Ontario Aquaculture Research Center at Alma supports my work in many ways from teaching to research. We really want to use Alma and I think it's a great place for improving the growth and resilience and sustainable sustainability of the aquaculture industry through research, training, and education. So I just wanted to thank the Ontario Agri-Food Alliance, Innovation Alliance, and also MAFRA for hearing about uh, all the fun science we have going on at the University of Guelph and at the Alma Station. So here's my contact information. Uh, please reach out to me if you want to do a project, either if you're a student or a researcher or from industry, um, please go ahead and contact me. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Thank you very much for that presentation. So hopefully everybody's still with us. So now we're going to get ready to welcome our second speaker. Our second speaker is RJ Taylor and RJ is a second generation fish farmer. RJ and his sister Arlen own four land-based farms and a processing facility in Gray County. They are the largest supplier of juvenile fish to Ontario's net pen farmers in Northern Ontario. Here in the South, they process and deliver fish to over a thousand homes every month. You may have seen them on Facebook as Spring Hills Fish. RJ is also the managing director for the Ontario Aquaculture Association and is on the advisory group for Omafra Minister Ernie Hardiman. And whenever you're ready, RJ, you can go right ahead. Perfect. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Can you see my screen there? Yep. Okay, awesome. So thank you. Um, uh, Rebecca, um, for inviting me to, to participate today. I was asked to chat a little bit about um, ALMA and the, the history of the relationship between ALMA and, and industry, us fish farmers. Um, but before I do that, um, I thought I would actually talk about this guy. Um, who you see on the screen right now is uh, my dad. So my dad, Jim Taylor, has actually been in the aquaculture sector here in Ontario for over 50 years. He, um, as, as well as um, uh, Dr. Rich Bokia, and we saw Michael Burke earlier, um, were uh, integral pillars for setting up Ontario's fish farming industry. And we're very, very, very thankful to them. Um, but a fun fact before I dove in was that um, my dad uh, actually partnered with a few um, other uh, partners to build Creek Bank Trail Farm in the 1980s. Uh, that later sold to the University of Guelph to become the Alma Aquaculture Research Centre and now the Ontario Aquaculture Research Centre. So um, even on my way here this morning, I was hearing stories from my mom about being eight months pregnant with my sister and having to hand grade fish at Creek Bank. Um, and then even after my sister was born, they, they lived on site there for a bit. So lots of family history there. So I'm really excited to, to be able to dive into a little bit of that today. So before I uh, talk about that, I'll take you on a little bit of a, a, a tour. Um, as quickly as I can. So um, thanks to, to people like my dad, we have this sector today. So this is a map showing roughly what the commercial fish farming sector is in Ontario, um, dotted all over the province, um, including in the, the, the far west, but I wanted to focus in on this map. Um, and although it is all over Ontario, it's concentrated into three main areas. That's, uh, that's a quick look at our, our sector across the province. Um, but if we zoom in on, on our farm, 
um, Cedar Crest Trout Farm, or sometimes we go by, by Spring Hills Fish. Um, we're a second generation farming business. It's my sister Arlen and I now. Um, we have four land-based trout farms um, and a processing facility. Uh, we have about 14 full-time staff and nine part-time. Um, we kind of operate on, on two different sides of the, the agri-food sector. Um, we're the largest supplier of fingerlings to the net pen sector, which uh, supplies a lot of the sort of mass and large retailers. Uh, but then we also, close to home, have our own small processing facility where we're growing rainbow trout, arctic char, and coho salmon, and we're dropping it off at about a thousand doorsteps every month. Uh, that's something new that we started since COVID. So. So quick little look, because I know everyone's joining from their computers at home. Um, this is a typical uh, farm of ours. You see concrete raceways like that. You see indoor troughs. Uh, you can see some of the, the fingerlings, the little guys moving around there. Uh, these are the three species uh, that we farm when they get a little bit older. Um, this is our breeding program. So we hatch about 8 million um, rainbow trout eggs a year. Um, some go to Rowe, some go to uh, the bait market, but the lion's share um, grow right here in Ontario. And then uh, the last bit about us is the family business part. So this is, um, we are um, not alone in being a family business, but um, Cedar Crest and the, the farming operation that we have um, is like many of Ontario's fish farms. Um, we're a small, mid-sized company, entirely family-owned, often family-operated, um, uh, even in the, the core teams. Um, but the, the reason why I wanted to, to focus on this today is that the, the role that ALMA, or the Ontario Aquaculture Research um, Station, plays is that although aquaculture is a fast growing, emergent, progressive sector. Um, and of all of the agri-food sectors, it's often cited as the one with the most growth potential um, and the most growth potential without having to offset another, another part of the agri-food sector. Um, it still is uh, owned by small and mid-sized companies. And these companies don't have a lot of the, we don't have R&D departments or significant research budgets um, or even uh, enough of our capacity that we can take offline to try out different things. And that's why ELMA has always played a very, very significant role in the generation of our, uh, in the evolution of our sector for decades. So from a, from a fish farmer perspective, I wanted to, to chat about really the ways that the Ontario um, Aquaculture Research Station um, support us farmers. So in the eyes of a, a business owner, um, we, we deal with a lot of short-term problems and long-term problems. The short-term are the questions that uh, I'm asking myself, like how are we gonna make it through the season? Something's changed, uh, something's new, there's a new problem. Um, and then there are the longer-term problems that where I'm asking myself, how am I gonna continue to be able to pay my employees like in three years or four years or five years? Those far-reaching things. Um, and often when you see a lot of grant programs or R&D funding, or you want to work with a researcher, um, it's a very formal process and it can take that sort of six to 12 months to get a research project going. So that's where um, we've closely worked with Alma on these sort of more long-term projects. And those are looking towards those sort of three year, how, how am I going to adapt to, to big changes in the market? How am I going to keep optimizing? How am I going to grow? How am I going to compete with those in Canada and especially those import markets? Um, and so there, there, there's, a, there's been a big relationship there with Alma. But then there's all sorts of little things that always come up when you're a farmer, which are those short and those seasonal things. It's like, oh no, um, I hear that we want to try out a different medication or we want to try out a different feed ingredient or there's something new on the market or all of a sudden this showed up in my water and I don't know what to do or, huh, this weird thing popped up in my genetics. Um, and that is really where um, we find a significant value from having Alma exist. And I can get into that on the, the next slide. Um, as I said, um, it really does provide the necessary capacity that our small and mid-sized farming businesses don't have. Um, and then it also really supports market development. One story I can share on that was um, up until the start of COVID, we farmed exclusively rainbow trout. Um, but with the dawn of COVID, we saw a huge disruption in the agri-food sector. 
Um, it was harder to get um, fish from elsewhere. Um, people were much more interested in local supply. And also a lot of fish from the restaurant market just flooded into to, to the regular grocery and retail. And so us as a farming operation, we needed to move pretty quickly to adapt and to survive. And so that's when we opened our own processing plant and we started filleting rainbow trout as fast as we could um, and, and delivering it to homes. But um, what ha happened very quickly is people started saying, do you have any other types of fish? Do you have any other types of fish? Um, and Alma actually kept an Arctic char breeding population going um, for almost a decade when no other Ontario farmers were growing Arctic char, which meant that when the market sort of said, what other local fish do you have? Um, we could almost turn on the taps and we had a, this, this huge supply of Arctic char. Not only that, but we had the knowledge for how to grow it so that we could start growing it ourselves and get it out to market. So they, Alma plays a big role in terms of market development and, and adaptation. And the last one um, is, is really, it is a hub for community building in the province. Um, uh, fish farming isn't like a lot of other agri-food sectors. We don't have neighbors that also fish farm. The other fish farmers are, you know, um, tens if not hundreds of kilometers away. And so we rely on things like the, the research center um, to kind of bring us together. So they actually have a, an introduction to aquaculture and aquaponics uh, seminar that they do, which brings a lot of people into the aquaculture fold. But then there are future seminars and future knowledge dissemination. And every time there's sort of a new technology demonstration, it brings all of our community together and allows us to, to share knowledge. So. so some of the things we have ongoing right now um, when it comes to breeding um, is here at Cedarcrest, we have the largest rainbow trout breeding population um, in central Canada, but that, that's great to celebrate, but it also means that there's really no one else at our level that we can call and talk through breeding because some of the other aquaculture companies are growing different species um, at entirely different scales. And so Alma has played a very, very significant role in just essentially kind of being that, that, that point of contact to, to bounce the idea off of, to share genetics, to try out different things um, and continue sort of in, improving what we're doing. I already talked about the Arctic char breeding program, um, which has become sort of essential. Now we're growing it. Now there are a few other land-based farms growing it. And now we have this, this new market um, here. Um, Lake Whitefish is another, some, it is another fish with very exciting prospects. Um, and I, I, I should say here too that fish farming is a little different than some of the other agri-food sectors in just the sheer volume of species that we grow. And, and although I would love to say that a trout to a char to a Lake Whitefish is like, you know, a broiler chicken to a, to a, to a, a root, like a, like an egg producing chicken or a meat chicken. In reality, sometimes they're as different as like a cow to a pig to a chicken. And so with, with Alma having all of this knowledge of, of how, to, how to grow trout and Arctic char, we saw Nile tilapia, we saw Lake Whitefish, we saw them trying out the coho salmon trials. Um, being this sort of focal point for, for, for this cross species, um, or not cross species, but um, helping farmers grow these different species. Um, is really, really essential to us. So, so um, looking quickly at the, the diet and nutrition here, um, on the sort of short term um, side of things, um, we're doing um, like a flesh color comparison now. So we know that in the large scheme that, that there can be orange fish in the market, that the market only wants a very specific um, pie. And we don't have the tools necessarily to do the colorometer and to, to do the tests, um, but we partnered with Alma uh, to make sure that um, the different feeds and different ingredients weren't necessarily messing with the flesh color. Um, we're always doing feed trials, it seems. Um, and, and sometimes I hear, well, do we need these research centers because you know our, our, our multi-billion dollar feed companies spend hundreds of millions of dollars on feed research every year? And the answer is a definitive yes. Because often um, when private industry does research and development in those types of things, they're looking at a very, very, very specific parameter. It might be growth, for instance. Um, but as, as um, Professor Roy then talked about, by, by introducing something new, it could
could have repercussions elsewhere. And so the uh, Ontario Agriculture Research Center is look, taking that very holistic view. So often when we hear of a new feed ingredient, it could be a prebiotic, it could be something like a, a, a humic carbon, it could be black soldier fly larvae. We hear from the companies that, that they have all of these growth claims, but when we actually ha have the ability to, to, to very quickly put together a trial at ALMA and very quickly see some results out of it, that gives us farmers the reassurance that um, we could try those at our own farm without potentially devastating um, consequences. Um, on the technology scheme, we're seeing a new uh, code of practice come in for farmed fish. Um, and so that, that's gonna mean some technology changes, um, phased in technology uh, changes over the next few years um, at Ontario Fish Farms. Well, why would all of our fish farms look at different technologies and, and, and try them out when we have a, a place like Alma that can try out a few different technologies, share what they've learned, um, and then actually host demonstrations of different technologies, bring all the farmers together, see how they're working, get them comfortable with it. Those are the types of things that don't necessarily, they don't show up necessarily in grant applications, but they are invaluable to us as farmers. Um, another one are ultrasound trials. This one's in, in progress, but you know, we hear that chili uh, trout farms are using ultrasound to look at the gonads of, of trout. Um, and we could fly up a team from Chile and try and make that happen. But um, the ALMA is this gateway to all of these experts that may be using ultrasound in other fields that, that they can call and perhaps bring in. Um, and then we can be learning and doing that ourselves. So that's, that's the type of thing. Um, ALMA also plays a very significant role in the Ontario Animal Health Network. Um, in sort of surveillance and uh, mitigation techniques for like pathogenic bacteria, so some of the sort of common endemic diseases um, or emerging diseases that come up. Um, and also they, because of the, the way that the center is set up, having all of these different tanks, they have very um, quick ability to, um, to test things like new medications or new treatments. Um, one, for instance, is we, we use um, some, sometimes we use formaldehyde on the eggs to get rid of fungus. We don't particularly like using that chemical. And so with, in partnership with Alma, we're able to quickly test um, a few different types of alternatives, maybe parasitic acid, maybe humic carbon, and very quickly get some feedback in like two or three or four months um, about what's working so that we can make decisions um, as farmers. So. Um, uh, we talked a little bit about new species like the coho salmon and the whitefish. So often, um, and, and often fish farmers, we love trying new things. Um, as soon as we sort of conquered something, we always want to try a new species or a new way of farming or a new technology. Um, but sometimes we're the only ones that want to try that. So we're trying coho salmon at our farm right now. Um, but what we do is we bring in the eggs and then we send a small bit of them to, to Alma. And then what Alma experiences in growing them, we compare with, is that what's happening at our farm? And then we can kind of quickly identify um, if something that's happening is specific to our farm or specific to the species or specific to that spe uh, uh, a particular strain of trout, for instance. So um, it, it, it really does um, provide value that way. Um, another one in terms of sector development is advocacy within government. So sometimes as an industry association or as a farmer, it can be really difficult to get our voice heard um, within even OMAFRA, but across the Ontario government. Um, but Alma and folks like uh, Dr. Marcia Chazon and Professor Webin are, are seen as, as experts in their field. And so when they can corroborate some of the things that we're seeing or we're, we're collaborating on different tests, they can be a little bit of the industry advocacy voice in government. Um, and, and we're always so, so, so grateful for that. Um, and then there's just ongoing capacity building. If Alma's trying something new, um, the doors are always open and farmers are always going through and seeing how it's working and hearing how things are going. Um, there's so much staff training or even research reviews on something, um, learning aids and hands-on learning. So I realize I'm taking a little bit of time um, I know we've talked a little bit about some of the previous collaborations over the last three years, but 
they focus a lot on those areas of, of breeding and diet, technology, therapeutics, and then just um, building building the sector up. So thank you for listening to me. Um, and I'm happy to send the screen over to you, Rebecca. So I want to thank everybody for coming. Um, this was our final um, webinar of our four um, our four part series. So I want to thank RJ and David for participating today. Your presentations were very interesting, and we had a lot of good questions there. So if anybody has any questions for me or for the speakers, you can contact me at my email there below. Um, otherwise, we thank you very much for coming and have a great day. <laughs>